Hey everybody, thought I'd just do a quick little video talking about my new power hammer that I just finished setting up out here. Um, I've had it running for about two days now and I'm pretty impressed with it so far. So this isn't going to be like a tutorial on how to build it or anything. Um, just because if you're building your own power hammer, chances are you're going to be using a lot of scrap metal. So it's going to be so project specific. I don't think I can really uh, usefully do like a how-to video on it. But I just want to tell you some of the stuff I learned while building this thing. And some tips in case you're thinking of building your own. Now, before you get worried, I will show you this thing in action before I get into uh, all the boring details. So, heat this thing up. This is a railroad anchor. It's about 5 eighths thick, inch and a quarter wide. And show you what this hammer can do to it. <laughs> My main two sources of inspiration while I was building this thing were um, the old Beedry hammers and little giant hammers. So if you haven't seen those, just do a Google image search real quick and you'll see what I mean. Um, I decided to go for a sideways design, that way there's nothing behind the dies as I'm hammering. I'm not going to bump into the column. This is an inline hammer. Um, there are different ways to go about that, but that just means that you know, rather than being on a swinging arm, uh, this hammer is resting inside of guide rails and just goes up and down in a straight line above the anvil. And in this case, I just have a wheel with a crank on it that swings it around and spring linkages that um, do the rocking back and forth motion. And with the construction there, actually let the hammer head bounce up and down a little bit. Gives you a little bit more play in what kind of metal you can fit between those dies. So. Um, the largest, most massive part that I built on this is uh, this whole thing through here down to the base. That's all one solid piece of metal. It's around 500 pounds, the largest component of this. Um, and so that's my limiting factor moving this thing around. I wanted to keep that part uh, small enough that I could still put it on a heavy duty dolly and cart it around by hand, which I can. It's not fun, but you know, I'm able to move it by myself. Um, and I'd say that piece is about as massive as all the rest of the components put together. It's not attached directly to the anvil, I just have that bolted in and then a bracket on the column. Um, so the other thing that's really nice about having the anvil not be directly attached to the base is that uh, that lets me adjust the height of the anvil. Now obviously a big limitation of mechanical hammers is always going to be that you have an optimal size of stock that can work and then if you go above or below that you're kind of going to start losing power um, so having and you know, the being able to move the anvil around a little bit 
can see I have it resting on a three and a half inch wood block down there. Uh, that lets me drop this down a few inches so I can get in there with tooling if I want to, or I can have it set up how it is now where it's kind of optimized for hammering on like one inch stock. I can hammer on two inch, but I get a little less power. That still works all right. And then I can taper that down pretty much to zero with how I have it set up now. Um, the hammerhead is 65 pounds overall uh, with the faces attached on there. Uh, you can see I have it guided with wheels along the side. At first I was playing around with having it guided between brass plates. That worked all right, but uh, it does actually move quite a bit more freely with wheels than sliding between brass plates. I still have the brass plates on the front and back where it's not really being pushed into them. But for the side to side motion, uh, since there is pressure, you know, pulling from side to side as that crank turns around, it turned out that it moved a lot more freely using wheels rather than the brass plates, which do still have some friction. Now, I have this thing run with a two horsepower motor. Uh, it's two horsepower at 3600 RPMs. Pretty much the largest motor you can run off of regular 110 outlet. Um, and I think, you know, this 65 pound hammerhead is probably about the maximum that I can drive with a motor that size, so. I wanted to keep this all within the range that I could power with 110. To really scale any part of it up past where I have it now, I think you would start to need a 220 circuit. Um, but as it is now, it runs pretty well off of just regular 110. Obviously going from my 3600 RPM motor down to a speed that's going to give me, you know, two to three beats per second on the hammer, took some speed reduction, so I just have a bunch of old uh, pulleys salvaged off of tractors, belts from that and that gets me my speed reduction. Now to actually engage the hammer, I have this foot pedal, which kind of runs through a complicated set of linkages. And not to get too technical with it, just pushes those discs together. And that's what forms kind of my clutch system. I decided to do this rather than just having, you know, like a tensioning pulley that pushes on the belts and kind of engages one of the wheels. Um, this is kind of nice, but honestly, if I were to build it again, I think I would just go with the tensioning pulley system. Yeah, I've got this working and I'm happy with it, but it was a little more trouble than it was worth. And I don't think it would really be too terrible, especially if you have, you know, double or triple belts to just, you know, put a little bit more wear and tear on the belts and then replace those every few years. That does technically give me a few fewer moving parts though, so there are some benefits to it. And up at the top here, I have my large pulley and flywheel all kind of wrapped into one. So there, that weighs about as much as the hammerhead. I think ideally you'd want it to weigh a little bit more, but you know, as it's set up now, that does still give me a decent bit of spinning momentum up there. Seems to be enough power up there to kick the hammer into gear from rest. And there's obviously a lot more I could go into, but I don't know how useful that would be. So in summary, for anybody thinking about building themselves a hammer like this, um, here's my advice. First, uh, just go to a scrap yard and look around, try to find a nice big solid column of steel you can use for your anvil and something nice and solid, less massive you can use for your hammerhead. Because a lot of your design is gonna be kind of based around whatever you find for those. Uh, do some kind of inline hammerhead system and guide it with wheels. A lot easier than trying to mess around with rails. It runs a lot more smoothly. Give yourself some kind of adjustability. You know, whether you want to put it in the height of your hammerhead or the height of your anvil, doesn't matter. I think it's simpler to do the anvil, but you know, whatever you come up with, as long as you can adjust the height somehow, it's going to make your hammer a lot more useful. Um, you can do a steel clutch. Uh, you can do a mechanical clutch if you're feeling ambitious. I'd recommend just sticking with some sort of a tensioning pulley that moves when you press on a foot pedal. I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff that could be useful I forgot to mention, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but yeah, here's a basic overview.